Okay, so this team right here, so cute version number two. What it does is it takes full advantage of the Elec plushie, which I named Elky because, you know, I think I might have spelled Elky wrong. L, yeah, I totally spelled that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. If you know a good name for an Elky plushie, let me know in the comments and I'll name it that. Because I don't like Elec. Because I've been pronouncing it wrong this whole time. Anyways, um, the Elec plushie is a legitimately good pet in PvP because of itching for a stitching. And the fact that he has a high health pool. Because he has the most health in the game, he's able to take quite a bit of hits. And because he's a magic type, he cannot be one-shotted. So... He's really good for taking just big hits to the face since he has an overinflated health pool. He has more health than these two guys. Eh, he's a little bit health in that. He almost has double the health of these two guys put together. So he's able to take quite a bit of damage. Plus he also has a dodge ability where it increases his chance to dodge by 25% for two rounds. But he doesn't usually stay in that long. The whole reason I use this guy is for his free switch. Most switch abilities have some form of a cooldown. He does not though. It's unlimited switches and since he's tanky as crap you essentially get free switches because usually you switch a lot. You switch out a lot in PvP pet battles um, and like the downside to switching is that you'll get hit in the face during the turn you switch but with the plushie you can switch out for free basically basically you switch into him he gets hit since he can't hit anyway it doesn't really matter he's only there to get hit in the first place and then you just use your switch to go straight into the ore eater who will take no damage since itching first itching usually goes second because he's also the slowest pet in the game with only 179 speed i think even like all uh snails outspeed him too and then Ore Eater takes full advantage of being able to switch out as much as he wants because of Shell Armor. Shell Armor is definitely overpowered right now. You take a ridiculously less amount of damage for three turns since he's super fast. He's as fast as Death Adders. So he pretty much outspeeds everything uh, except birds and Death Adders. And, well, rabbits too, but rabbits aren't really a big deal since he also has a nice type advantage against rabbits anyway. So just a really good pet against the meta so you go into shell armor use that for three turns his body slam without taking the recoil damage since shell armor just blocks it and then set up a dot and then body out slam again and by the time you would use two body slams and one acid touch shell armor will be down in which case you just switch into your plushie and use itching for a stitching during the turn that you switch and the turn that you use itching for a stitching and it goes back into ore eater uh, shell armor will be off cooldown because it's only it has a five round cooldown and it lasts for three turns. So during the two turns that it's down, all you do is basically switch into him and just use Itchin' for a Stitchin', which will switch back into Ore Eater, as long as he follows the uh, Plushie, because the Plushie switches to whoever is next in the lineup. So if I switch these two, he would always switch into the Fiendish Imp next. And of course, if the Ore Eater is dead, he'll switch into the Fiendish Imp. So that's essentially the combo, but I usually start off with the Fiendish Imp, go into Nether Gate, set up Immolation in the back row because I really don't like Decoy. Decoy can ruin your day against this team since you really are just hitting a lot with Ore Eater. Ore Eater is your main damager. So Immolation will take care of Decoy for you since it counts as an attack. So you'll be able to get rid of Decoy one, one turn earlier. Plus Nethergate just allows you to mess up stuff and he heals up in the back row anyway so he's allowed to take as much damage as you want as long as he doesn't die. He'll be able to heal up for quite a bit with Immolation in the back row thanks to his humanoid ratio. So the essential like rotation for this is start off with fiendish imp set up his immolation navigate if you want doesn't matter go into the plushie and then use your free switch into your ore eater and then just shell armor body slam acid touch body slam switch into plushie itching for a stitching switch back into him shell armor body slam acid touch body slam switch into the plushie itching for a stitching so on so on refresh immolation whenever you want because you get free switches with alki it's an actual good team all right First team round begins, Little Ragnaros, Bone Serpent, and a Fire Wing. Couple of tier 1 pets, no biggie. Actually, I, I wouldn't consider... Bone Serpent's pretty good. Why not? I'll consider it tier 1. First, we'll start off with the old Yanta Garatsu. Switch him immediately into stupid Ragnaros. Then we're going to go into an Immolation, and... Oh... 
He's going straight into submerge, huh? Not sure why he's doing that. Now we've got the Alki plushie. So cute. And since this doesn't go off until the end of the turn, I think I'll I'll wait a turn before switching. There we go. I was able to dodge one at least. Cute as a button. I don't know how he's able to dodge since he just kind of stands still and does nothing. And there goes the Phoenix Bird. Oh damn, this guy can actually give me kind of a hard time since he's faster. Whatever. Shell armor is going up now. Then we're going to go into a body slam, which will be healed up. And then an acid touch. Oh, I'm faster. Ha! You're not going to get that nice, sweet heal. <laughs> oh, you didn't even try to go for it. It's just going into deep burn. Deep burn does hit hard enough where it does some damage to me. But damn, I took him out in three hits. I wasn't expecting that. Um, how much longer do I have on immolation? It doesn't really matter. I can't switch into him. I have to go into my Elky plushie. Sealy plushie. Alright, now we're just going to go straight into a switch. Since, oh. I probably should have just stuck it out one more turn. Mmm, this is going to hit me hard. Whatever. Shell armor anyway. He can't do anything else anyway. Now let's go into a body slam. While he refreshes his bone barrage, which isn't going to do anything to me. And then we're going to set up acidic touch and then get off one more body slam before doing another switch. Maybe. Oh, there goes little Ragnaros. Little Ragnaros is going to get hit. And I'll be able to get off one more body slam before switching out. Is he going to go into submerged? No, he's going to go into trap first. That's that's fine. I don't care. Alright, now I'm going to go back into this guy to refresh my immolation. Maybe. I'm going to switch him out first. Switch. Ha 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 ha. You have that dot on you. You're going to die back there. <laughs> Unless he decides to switch out immolation. I really hope magma trap doesn't go off. It didn't. I'm good. And Ragnaros died in the back row. And we're going to go into the plushie. I think I'm just going to stay on him until magma trap goes away. Really. Let's go into cute as a button. Yay, magma trap went off. This is exactly what I wanted to happen. Okay, Magma Trap went off my plushie. Plushie is going to die right here. So let's go into the free switch unless he decides not to do the switch. No, he's going to kill him. That's fine too. Having me die also gives me a, a free switch. And then we've got Hachiman who's going to go straight into shell armor. Because once he uses Bone Branch, which isn't going to do any damage to me even if it hits, he's dead. Bone Serpent is out of here and I just took out I don't know I want to consider bone serpent a tier one pet it's a pretty good pet I'm not gonna lie but I just don't think it's tier one good Ragnaros is definitely tier one so my team with the Elky plushies it's actually really good I'm pretty sure a lot of people don't expect the Elky plushie to be it's not Elky it's L Elek is it Elek plushie I don't know, at some point I've been saying it wrong. The Elec plushie, I think I'm just going to rename it to something else. I'll just call it by its nickname so I don't have to worry about calling it the wrong thing. Okay, rename Elec plushie. I'm going to name it to... What would I been call it? Elecky. Elec. Elecky. There, now his name is Elecky. The Elecky. Elecky. That's kind of a dumb name. Um, if you know of a cool name I can name my Alec plushie, you should let me know in the comments and I might I might name it that. Alright, looks like we're going against what a murky blue? Huh. This moveset's not that great. Singing Sunflower, Kunlai Runt. Okay, I'm going to start off with my Yatagaratsu. Set up Flame Shield. 
The reason I have this guy in here is to stop decoys, but he also works out as a really nice opener. So let's go straight into Nether Gate, do a little bit of free damage, screw up his strategy a tiny bit. If he uses sunlight, that only benefits me. So, go for it, dude. I uh, do not care. I'm gonna go into my Elky for the free switch. Ooh, maybe he might use solar beam on me. No, he doesn't have solar beam, does he? Because he has sunlight. No, he has solar beam. Totally does. All right, now I'm gonna go into the free switch after taking a solar beam. And now I've got my Hachiman. He can't do anything for two turns, so. I got one of those. And an acid touch. And... I think I'm just gonna go for one more acid touch. I don't think he's gonna go straight into solar beam. Ah, oh, I totally read that wrong. He totally went straight into solar beam. Okay, now I'm gonna put up shell armor. Just because I wanna go into body slams without taking damage. And I can do that when shell armor's up. Plus his solar beam totally faked me out. Okay, so uh, he's as good as dead. I'm just gonna go into one more body slam, just to make sure he dies. Oh, a little runt. He, yeah, he'll live it. He's healing up quite a bit with sunlight out. Okay, so now that we've got this guy out, I'm gonna go into my Yataga Garatsu. Damn, he's at a huge health increase. And now we're gonna go into the Elki. That way he can take the deep freeze. And then we're gonna go into the free switch. Actually, you know what? I kinda wanna go back into this guy just so I can set up my flame shield again. Okie dokes. There, now I'm faster than him so I can go straight into my switch. It's like the sunflower is back up again. Now I'm gonna go into my flame shield. He reset his photosynthesis, and I'm just going to use a couple of burns. I should be able to survive a solar beam. Because he's going to heal up a ton under sunlight. I might be able to survive a solar beam, is what I'm saying. <laughs> Don't die. Whew, that was close. Okay. And I'll be able to heal up all the way in the back row, so. As long as I kill him, oh my god, die already. Okay, he's dead. Yatagaratsu is... He's totally fine right now, and he's on fire. Because the cool thing with sunny weather is it also increases my heal by quite a bit. Um, I think I'm going to refresh Immolation. Deep Freeze... Ooh, that's risky. I'm just going to go into the original strategy. Go straight into Elki. Yep. There he goes, the deep freeze, and then we're going to go into the free switch. Switch into Hachiman, who is going to go into a shell armor right here, and then a body slam, and an acid touch, because Agony isn't going to do anything to me. Merc a lot. About a couple turns too late on that Scorched Earth. You're just going to be hurting yourself while I take no damage. And one more Body Slam, and he is out of there. Okay, so I can't really go into the free switch right now. I have to wait one turn before I can switch into my Elky plushie. Or my Elky. Okay, now I'm going to go into my Elky to die. <gasps> Poor Elky! Luckily, he's taking all of this dot damage from both the dot and Scorched Earth. You know, I was actually thinking about bringing in a pet for this team that just uses a Scorched Earth as well as an Immolation. I think there's a pet that has that ability. I think there's like a fire pet that does that. Flawless Mechanical Battlestone, nice. Um, let's see, where is he at? Let me check real quick. Pretty sure I added him to my queue. Yeah, he has Scorched Earth and Immolation. I want to level up a file flame for this team. The only reason I'm using the imp is for emulation, because 
The decoys do kind of counter this team. I can still win against decoy teams, but it kind of ruins my strategy of taking full advantage of shell armor. And I think Fell Flame, Scorched Earth doesn't do anything to decoy, but Immolation does. That's the only reason I have him on here is for Immolation. I kind of don't want to use two tier one pets up here though. So once Fell Flame, once I decide to level this guy up, he'll be, he'll probably replace the Fiendish Imp. Since he also has a crap ton of health, 1800, that's, that's a lot. He'll be able to survive switches, no problem, even if he doesn't heal up in the back row like this guy does. 